bulletins out this uh, this morning. We're going to go over our preset at this time. Uh, before we do, I want to thank everybody for uh, showing up today. Also, want to thank everybody for tuning in on Facebook Live and Eternal Broadcasting. It's a blessing to have you with us. All right, it's, it, our verse for the day is Ephesians 6, chapter 13. Let's all say it together this time. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Let's pray at this time and ask the Lord to meet with us. <clears throat> oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day you give us, Lord. Thank you for our many blessings. Lord, we just thank you so much for sending your own son, Jesus, down across for our sins. We're so thankful for that, Lord. Lord, we just thank you so much for allowing us to be in your house this morning, Lord, just to be able to worship you freely, God. Lord, we just thank you for the amazing time we had in Sunday school hour, Lord. We pray that that just uh, flows over into the morning worship uh, service here today, Lord. Lord, I just pray in Jesus' name you just be with the preacher, God. I just pray you continue to touch him and bless him in a mighty way. pray you just uplift him on high, Lord, just give him the right word to say at the right time. Lord, I just pray in Jesus' name you just be with all of us that are here, Lord. I just pray you just open the windows of heaven, Lord, and just pour down blessings upon us today. Lord, we just ask you to please be with uh, every need in the building, Lord, and online. Just pray you just answer it according to your purchase and the Holy Will. Lord, there's some uh, people on our prayer list this morning, Lord, who are in special need of our prayers. Lord, we just pray you just touch them and bless them in a mighty way. Lord, we ask you to please continue to be with Jamie Cole, Lord, who's in uh, Lynchburg General, Lord, his pneumonia and, and bless his kidneys, Lord. Pray you just touch them and bless them and bring them back with us soon, God. Lord, we ask you to please be with the family of Woody Hardy, Lord. Pray you just comfort them and bless them at this time. And the same with the family of the uh, Florida collapse victims, God. I pray you just touch them and bless them, Lord, and just give them the peace that passes all understanding, Lord. Lord, we ask you to please be with uh, Gary and his unspoken, Lord. Please be with Jim Phillips, uh, Virginia Walker, Lord, and with uh, that broken leg and arm. Pray you just be with her and have a speedy recovery. And Lord, please be with Gary McCullum, Lord. You know the needs there. Pray you just bless them and answer them according to your precious and holy will. Lord, we ask you just to please just show up in a mighty way today, Lord. Pray that your will be done, Lord. And we just pray most importantly, Lord, if anybody that comes into your house today does not know you as Lord and Savior, we pray today be the day of their salvation. Lord, we just love you and thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, we're going to go ahead and have an opening song at this time. Go ahead and stand to your feet and turn to page 250. We're going to sing all three verses. Our burdens are lifted at Calvary. Page 250.
Central Calvary this morning. Say amen. I'm thankful. All right. At this time, we're going to have Brother Bill come up for our birthday and Sunday school report. Y'all put your hands together and make him feel welcome. Buddy back there. Y'all pray for him. Whew. He got a long road ahead of him. He got to walk around on one knee. I'm serious. Can't do it without my preacher. My goodness. Keep praying. I'm serious. I serious. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? We appreciate you, man. Amen. Appreciate you too, man. Big job. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I know just coming up here? God is good Amen. all the time. Amen. We had one piccolo player go to heaven. We got another one. His nickname is the Moon. Yay! Hmm. You know the Lord's good. Hey. He just treats us so good. Hey. We need to treat him better too. Hey. Okay. All right. <coughs> I done did the advertisement. Now let's get to the service business. Today, June the 27th, that's today, 40, Underwood. I would ask you how old you are, but uh, <laughs> no way, Jose. Monday, June the 28th, Lillian McKee. Y'all make sure you wish her a happy birthday. Wednesday, June, there he is, June the 30th, Big Al Potabinsky. <laughs> look at that smile. I hope when I get 110, I can look that good. <laughs> I'm sure I'll hear that, right? You'll come off the top rope on it. <clears throat> <laughs> Friday, July. My goodness, time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? By the way, I'm going to let y'all stay and look pretty for a minute. 22 souls saved. <laughs> All your teachers stand up, too. Teachers, stand up. Give them a hand. They did that. Bless the Lord. Thank you. Y'all may be seated. All right, here's the last one. Friday, July the second. Angela Oaks. <laughs> last but not least. Ronald Hale Hazelwood is spending his first best VK, uh, birthday album in heaven. Give the Lord a hand. He ain't hurting no more. Smiling, just that big, that old bald head just a shining. It's not bald. <laughs> there you go. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I knew he was going to say it. Did I miss anybody? Okay, any anniversaries? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> How long? <laughs> that girl's after my own heart. I was thinking that, but I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> All right! <laughs> He got it. Now you got to find it. <laughs> Thank you. You may be seated. Okay. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Every day I'd walk.
Sunday. I'd go to all these restaurants, and, you know, my wife got a bad back because his calves carried me. So we'd go to these restaurants, and they would be there. These tracks would be in that restaurant, and people would read them. Smart. Okay. Don't forget your missionaries. Pray for all of them, especially Emmanuel Bayola. All right? Okay, here's the man. Thank you. You're the man. Oh, he's the man. I'm not the man. Okay. I know the man. Amen. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Brother Bill. At this time, go ahead and get your bulletins out once again. Uh, we see on the front of it, we have our Bible school graduation tonight at 6 p.m. I tell you, it was a blessing uh, last week to see all these kids uh, in church. Amen. They could have been anywhere else in the world, but they chose to be at church, and the parents brought them. Amen. It was a blessing. So please, everybody, come back tonight and see all the good things the Lord has planned tonight at 6 p.m. All right, go ahead and open it up, and we see that we will be having youth camp. 2021 campfire in just two short weeks. Uh, if you would have, if you have any kids that like to sign up, please uh, see Brother Ken Vipperman. He'll be glad to sign them up today. And also, there are so, some camp donations needed uh, per Beverly Keene. Uh, we'll have all a bunch of kids, and they're going to need to eat. Amen. 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 Uh, so, uh, if you uh, can donate any of those. Um, uh, food items that are needed, please uh, see Beverly Keen, and she'll be glad to take them. Also, there are sponsorships needed uh, for campers. Uh, the price for a camper to go is $70, and uh, we'd like to see all kids be able to go. So if uh, God's blessed you this year and you'd like to give back, uh, see Brother Ken, and he'll be glad to uh, tell you all about it, uh, $70 per camper this year. Uh, right around the corner, uh, Prayer for America will be having an eternal broadcasting. That will be July 3rd. That will be at 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And the slogan is, be a once-a-day, every-day listener. And we need you. Uh, that's one thing our, our country needs is prayer. So uh, everybody be sure to tune in and uh, be sure to pray for America. <clears throat> July 4th, we'll be having an outdoor service and fellowship at the church at 5 p.m. Uh, there will be uh, hot dogs and homemade uh, fixings, uh, chips, and watermelon. So uh, be sure to be with us July 4th for outdoor service and fellowship. Tuesday Bible study is uh, back on this week at 11. Uh, they're in the book of Hosea. If you're not doing anything at 11, come on out for a blessing. Also, uh, fall semester will be coming soon for Believer's Bible Institute, and uh, they need some new students. And if you haven't ever done it, I promise it will be a blessing to you. And uh, be sure to sign up with Mike Tickle today. And with that, we're going to go to our offering. Uh, if you got your uh, white envelopes in front of you, that's for our tithes and offering. And our brown envelopes for our building fund. There's a box in the back right there uh, at the table where Ken's sitting. And uh, if you don't have cash or uh, check, there's also a credit card machine. Brother Ken be glad to help you with that as well. And also, if you're listening by way of Tunnel Broadcasting on Facebook Live, you can give uh, at our website. It's a secure link. And also, by way of mail, you can send it to P.O. Box 10004, Danville, Virginia, 24543. I'm going to pray over our offering this time, and then we'll have a special with by Miss Diane. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day. Lord, we thank you for our many blessings. Lord, we just thank you so much for uh, all that you've done for us already so far, God. We just pray you continue to uh, shine down upon us, God. Lord, we ask you to please uh, bless this time as we uh, uh, bless our offering, God. We pray that you just uh, be with the giver and, and the gift. Lord, just take it and just uh, do mighty works because of it, Lord. I pray you just have your will and way. I pray that we see soul saving lives change because of it, God. Lord, we ask you to please continue to shine down upon us. We love you and thank you for all you do. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
take your Bibles this morning, if you wouldn't turn. We're talking about the seven signs of Christ's near return. Turn to Zechariah chapter 8, verse 2. We talked about last week birthing pains, and we certainly are. As a lady would have signs and pains of the soon coming of a baby, we're having signs and birthing pains of the coming of the Lord. <clears throat> we were talking about last week the fact that <clears throat> these signs are ever before us. And our redemption start with C, Ken, if you would. Luke 21, 9. Here, our redemption is near. It's not yet the end. We're not at the door, but our we're near our redemption. The Bible says in Luke 21, 9, that when you shall hear the wars and rumors, uh, hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by, uh, by and by. Verse 28, when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift your heads for your redemption, draweth nigh. I'll be glad for redemption, won't you? A new body, new life, new beginning. This old world will be behind us. Our problems will be behind us. I went to the doctor on Thursday and he said, get up on the table. I thought, you and who else is going to help me? Y'all a dead crowd this morning. <clears throat> so I got up on the table and he said, I lay back. I said, boy, he's asking for miracle after miracle. And so I laid back and he punched his button and my legs went up. And he said, may I look at your stomach? I said, it's not hard to find. <laughs> he said, I'm going to use your stomach to draw on. I said, you got plenty of canvas, go ahead. <laughs> he said, if I cut you from here to here, you're going to have a hard time. I said, well, don't do it then. <laughs> he said, but if I poke four holes and blow you up, with air. <laughs> These teachers in Bible school are so smart. <laughs> One of them said, and I wouldn't tell you who it was for nothing in the world, but it was Shannon Moorfield. said, yeah, they're going to use you for the Macy's Day Parade. <laughs> 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 you know, you just can't shut her up. It just keeps coming. She's the gift that just keeps giving, amen? <laughs> so I come to Sunday school this morning, and, you know, I wouldn't tell you who says these things are nothing in the world. But old E.T. down there, E.T. Connor said, yeah, I bet you that looked like the whole world. <laughs> then he walked by me at the desk. I said, well, if I'm the world, son, you the moon. <laughs> you the moon. We got trouble on every corner, amen? Redemption. One day there won't be no earth or no moon, either one. Say amen, E.T. Won't be no earth or moon, either one. A new heaven and a new earth. Redemption in the Greek is the word apolotros. And it means ransom in full. Boy, I tell you, we've been paid in full. Amen? And one day we're going to be redeemed. Riddance of our troubles. That's the one I like. Amen? No more troubles. No more trials. Christian salvation from death the grave, hell, deliverance, and redemption. I love it, old song, our redemption draweth nigh. Amen. When he was on the cross, we were on his mind that one day all our troubles and trials would soon be over. And now we're suffering because we're Christians. And uh, we're going to show you, I'm not going to read all these passages, say amen. amen. We'll be here all day long. But uh, there were some passages of Scripture Jesus gave as lists of signs of the coming, soon coming of the Lord. And they're found in three of the four Gospels. First of all, they're false prophets. They're everywhere. Amen? People teaching false doctrine and untruths. Hatred. Boy, I've never seen a time in my world where people hate each other like they do today. Then there's sin. Sin will abound. And that certainly is the case in the world we're living in. Uh, sin is everywhere. Uh, you can't get away from it. It's in your face 24-7. Love will be lust instead of compassion. People don't know what real love is today. They think love is lust. 
Love and lust don't even come in the same ballpark. They're not even in the same world. Love is compassion. Amen? Somebody ought to teach Shannon some compassion. <laughs> anyway, family turmoil. Boy, I'm getting it good, aren't I, Shannon? Family turmoil. Uh, trouble. I mean, families just can't get along today. Families hadn't seen each other in years, hadn't spoken in years. Family turmoil. Then persecution of true believers. Boy, it's coming every day stronger and stronger. Wars and rumors of wars. Everywhere you turn, people are fighting nation against nation. Pestilence and plagues with plants and animals. I'm going to tell you something, folks. COVID is just the screw. We haven't seen the worst yet. It's still coming. More is coming. Famines. Diseases and pandemics in hum humans in Luke 21 11. Earthquakes. They're not even telling you about earthquakes. There's so many earthquakes now every day, they don't even report them anymore. When you heard of an earthquake, it was a big news. Now there's earthquakes every day, but they're not reported because they're so common now. And then great signs from heaven. Folks, I'm telling you, Jesus is coming soon. Amen? Now these signs are birth pangs. Uh, we better start paying attention. Jesus is about to come. We see all these things. I just listened to you. We ought to know he's soon to return. Matthew 24, Christ asked two questions of his disciples in verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Now, when shall these things be is asking about when will the temple be destroyed? That was the sign they were looking for. When will the temple be destroyed? When will the Lord come? Of course, he wasn't talking about the temple, the physical being. He was talking about his body. Amen? That he would be crucified. And they asked about the signs of his soon return and the end of the world. The whole context and tenor of what Jesus was trying to tell them was do not be afraid or fear these birth pangs of his return. So we're not to fear this stuff. Yes, it's going to bite us. It's going to pinch us. It's going to hurt us. It's going to be trouble, heartache, and sorrow. But don't let it upset you. Jesus is coming soon. Amen? All our troubles and trials will be gone. These things will take place. These things must take place. These things will happen over a period of time. This is not the end yet. These are the signs that take place. There are others to come, and they will continue to come until Jesus returns. And a lot of this is already taking place, and a little more has got to happen. Yet some of it's taking place right now. Yet, with these birth pains, they increase the closer they get to the coming of the Lord. Folks, what I'm trying to say is these things are going to get worse. Time's going to get tougher as it draws nigh closer for the Lord to return. Now, let's look at today's subject, becoming a people. This is a sign, not only the birth pains, all the troubles that are happening, but the Bible says when Israel becomes a nation, you better start looking toward the east. And that was in 1949. It's been many years ago. How much closer is the Lord's coming? Amen? I'm sorry, 1948 is when Israel became a nation and it has grown, it's prospered ever since. All this turmoil in Israel is not happening by accident. Change in leadership is not happening by accident. These things must happen in order for the Lord to come back. You see, Netanyahu's kept the chain down pretty good over there for many years. But now he's no longer the leader. And let me tell you something. Some, and I think we can speak from experience. When leaders change, bad things start happening. And that's what's going to start happening in Israel. Bad things are going to start happening. This scriptures, these scriptures refer to the coming, uh, Israel becoming a nation. And then Christ returning at the end of the tribulation period to set up his millennial kingdom. First of all, Zechariah 8, 2, where I told you to turn to. The return to Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion. Israel is God's chosen people. You can't deny that. Now, we're the church, and we're his bride. But Israel is still God's chosen people. He still loves Jerusalem. He loves the nation of Israel. It's the apple of his eye. I was jealous for her with great fury. Now, folks, everybody knows jealousy is a real thing. And I'll tell you one thing you want to find out. You flirt with somebody else's husband and wife, and you'll find out inside your head what fury is. 
and jealousy. Say amen. At least it ought to be that way. Sometimes I think today people aren't jealous like they used to be. But jealousy is a real thing with God. He's a jealous God. He didn't want the devil to have his children. He didn't want the devil to have his church. Say amen. He's a jealous God. I was jealous for her with great fury. Thus saith the Lord, I'm returned unto Zion. I will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. That's at the end of the tribulation period. It's the end of the tribulation period and the beginning of the millennium. And in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called the city of what? City of truth. The truth does matter, folks. America doesn't want the truth to matter. America wants you to live the way you want to live. Be true to that own self. That'll get you straight to the pits of hell. You better believe the truth that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again to save you from yourself and your heartaches and your sorrows of life and sin. And the mount of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain, at the end of the tribulation, we're going to come back with Christ on white horses. And Jesus is going to destroy the armies in the valley of Megiddo. And he's going to take the world over, and he's going to rule and reign with a rod of iron. And we're going to be his administration. Say amen. The church is going to be the administrators of the new age and the new millennium. So he'll return to Jerusalem. We'll rule and reign from Jerusalem for a thousand years. The world will finally know what peace is, real peace, and know what a real leader is, and that's Jesus Christ. Now B, he says, I'm going to regret, gather you in Jerusalem. That is already taking place. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. In 1948 when Israel became a nation people began coming from all over the world, Jews from all over the world, back to Jerusalem, back to their homeland because they had been found a place and a nation. When you read the book of Revelation its context assumes that Israel is a nation because God knows what he's talking about. God doesn't lie. And in 1948, Israel became a nation. It is one of the most powerful nations in the world, one of the smallest nations, but one of the most powerful nations, and that attests to who their God is. Say amen. Here the Lord promises that though the Jews have been scattered all over the world for many years, for some 3,000 years to be exact, that he would regather them in that place called Israel, the promised land, talked about in the Old Testament, that Moses and Joshua worked so hard to get the people of Israel to. And uh, it, God can only accomplish the feat that's been accomplished. And as you watch Israel grow and prosper, it's a wonderful thing to know that God's able to do what man cannot do. Amen? If God can gather animals two by two and seven by seven on an ark to save the world and a world from a worldwide flood, he can do the same for the nation of Israel before the battle of Armageddon, and we're already seeing that. We're seeing it take place. He, the, Jesus is going to return to Jerusalem. He's going to regather everyone who's a Jew back to Jerusalem, but see, he's going to redeem Jerusalem. Notice the Bible in Isaiah 52.8. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With all the voice together shall, they shall sing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring them, bring again Zion. Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people and hath done what? Redeemed Jerusalem. In 1948, all of that area was a rapid wasteland, a desert. Jerusalem, of course, is the city of David, the very place where David's grandson, Jesus Christ, was born in Bethlehem, but he'll rule from Jerusalem. All believers are his watchmen. You're his watchmen today. If you believe in Christ, you're a watchman. Our method of preparation is different from the rest of the world. We lift up our voice and we preach the promises and the truths of the gospel. We cannot back up on preaching the truth. We cannot back up on preaching the gospel. We must move forward to do all we can do to preach the truth. That's how we gather the people back to God and to salvation. We have hope in a world where there's 
seems to be no hope. Every day I look at the information, the news on the internet, and it's one problem after another, after another, one trouble after another. And there seems to be a lot of hopelessness. And of course the news media don't help because they like hopelessness because that sells, uh, sells a print and sells attention and they make money off of it. But I'm here to tell you where the world has no hope, we as God's children have hope promised in the Word of God. This thing's going to come out right. Oh, it's going to be rocky. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. But buddy, when that trumpet sounds, hey, we're going to get out of here. We're never going to see trouble, heartache, or sorrow again. Say amen right there. No more pain. Oh, we comfort the world and we comfort God's people in Israel with the message that God is going to redeem them to himself, his own, and he's going to turn things around. Jesus is going to take over the things then are going to be right and going to be faithful. Listen to me. Daniel chapter 11 verse 45 says he'll be reigning in Jerusalem. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. And he shall come to his end and none shall help him. The amazing truth of this story is that his second coming, Jesus will come from heaven. We will be with him on white horses in the clouds. He himself will defeat the Antichrist. Who's that? We don't know and I don't care to know. He's going to be here after I'm gone. Amen. I'm never going to have to deal with the Antichrist. The devil and all his armies of the world and all the demons of the spirit world are going to be defeated that day at the battle of Armageddon. He will come to his expected end and he will and uh, the devil will be destroyed and we'll be with the Lord and we too shall see our destiny fulfilled before our very eyes. We got a bright future Amen. here and later. Amen. We got something to look forward to. Don't listen to these old pessimists. They watch too much hee haw. Some of y'all been watching hee haw. I can see it in your face. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Woo! Hey, preacher, evidently you've listened. Yeah, I've listened a couple of times. We're all human, say so amen. But we got hope. We don't have to sing that song. We don't have to drink moonshine. We don't have to get drunk. We don't have to get high. Don't y'all take y'all's money to start buying marijuana next week. <laughs> Preacher won't know it, but God will. God will. Hey, we don't need that stuff. All we need is God and his word and the Holy Spirit. Say amen. We got great, a great future to come. And folks, we'll have a heavenly bird's eye view of this world. On that day, E.T. will find out my stomach was not as big as the world. <laughs> He'll find out how big and beautiful the world really is when he rides in on that white horse. Amen. We'll get a bird's eye view of the armies of the world thinking they're going to defeat God. But with one word, Jesus Christ will wipe them all out. Amen. Come back. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a what? Expected in. When I went to see that cancer doctor two weeks ago, he scared me slam to death. Talking about immunodrugs, chemotherapy, shrinking tumors. Can't do that. We're going to cut your stomach out. My eyes is that big because I like my stomach. I've spent 57 years building it. And he says he's going to cut it out and get rid of it. I'm nervous. I'm, my nerves is tore up. I'm upset. But then I went to the doctor Thursday and walked in Dr. Kittrell's office. He comes in, shakes my hand, starts talking to me, and he starts saying, well, we can do this. I said, wait a minute. The other doctor said this. The other doctor said that. He said, I said, we can do this. We can handle this. He said, that thing's called a gist. I said, say it again. He said, it's called a gist. So he turns his computer around. He shows it to me. I'm looking at my own stomach from the inside out. Any of y'all ever seen?
in your stomach, it ain't a pretty sight, trust me. But inside my stomach, it looked like a fish fin flopping. He said, that thing flops. He says, we're going to go in there and we're going to cut it off and take it out and you're going to be fine. I said, I like you, Dr. Ketchell. Hey, he's talking about letting me keep my stomach and eat like I've been eating and enjoy life the way I've been enjoying life. I liked his message. His message was one of what? Hope and expected end. And I thought, man, all them people thought they were getting rid of me. Boy, they're going to get messed up now. <laughs> the rumor of my demise is greatly exaggerated. Say amen. I ain't going nowhere. This doctor's going to fix me. I'll be gone two weeks, but I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. And probably better than ever, I hope. Listen to me. An expected end. Don't listen to the devil. He'll tell you you got an unexpected end. He'll lie to you, get your nerves towed up. He'll make you take him little pills that make you wacky. Come on now. I'm here to tell you, God has got our lives planned all the way to the end. And it's all good. Amen? It's all good. He said, then shall you call upon me, and you shall go out and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and you shall ask me and find me, and we shall search for me for all your heart. And I'll be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. Say amen right there. Because sometimes we can get ourselves in a mess. We can get our lives in a captive mess. But I'm here to tell you, he's the great deliverer. Say amen. He's the great deliverer. Then he says, and I will gather you from what? All the nations. And from all the places where I've driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. You see, they turned against God. And God said, I'm not going to bless you when you turn away from me. There's a message in that for the church this morning. You see, we think sin is optional. No, sin is not optional. God said, no sin. Say amen. He wants us to be holy, not to be go to heaven. The blood of Jesus takes care of us going to heaven. But being holy helps other people get to heaven. Other people know about Christ. Get the church of God moving forward and not going backwards. Hey, God said, listen, I had to carry you away captive because you turned your back on me. The message for the hour this morning for the church is we don't have time to do that. Our time's running out swiftly. Jesus is coming soon. We've got to stay focused on the Lord. Amen? I think we had a good week of it this week, don't you? I think camp will be just as good. Say amen. amen. But we've got to stay focused. The devil wants to detour you and get you carried away captive and useless to God. Hey, it pays to be useful to God. It pays. Prophecies here, that once, the prophecy here is once again Israel will become a nation. And we saw that in Zechariah 12, 1 through 19. Replacement theology is a false misnomer. There's some preachers preaching, well, the church has taken Israel's place. That's not true. Israel's still God's chosen people. We're the bride, though. Say amen. We're the bride. And he's coming back for the bride. We're going to heaven and marry him and be with him for all eternity and be his bride and be his family forever. Israel went into captivity under Babylonian rule in 585 B.C. And then they exiled all of Israel to Babylon. This is, was God's punishment for their abandoning him in idolatry. Now let me stop. We don't worship little idols, but I tell you what we do worship. Selfishness and self-wants. It's just as bad as falling down before an idol. We've got to be careful as God's children. We don't start worshiping something other than him. A person, a thing, any of the pleasure, a sin. We've got to make sure we don't worship those things. This is God, was God's punishment for their abandonment. And they've not been a full-fledged nation again until 1948. They've been ruled by other nations like Babylon, Babylon the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Ottomans, the Turks, the Arabs, and the British. They were in bondage, listen to this, for some 2,534 years. But they were reestablished in 1948. 
fact of the matter is that none of these prophecies could be fulfilled until Israel became a nation. That has clearly already happened. So if in 1949 or 1948 they became a nation, a generation has been said to be between 40 and 80 years, I'd say we're getting pretty close to the coming of the Lord. What does that mean for me today, preacher? It's time to be the watchman. It's time to stand up and preach the truth. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus died, was buried, and rose again to save men's souls from hell. And if Jesus comes and you've not surrendered to him as your Lord and Savior, you'll spend eternity in the devil's hell. Let me tell you, this world does not want to hear that message. I had a man come in my office this week. I was hoping he'd be here today, so I guess I have to chase him down and try to get him again next week. Say amen. But he come in my office, and usually these people come in your office and go out as fast as they come in, but he stuck around for a while. I said, okay, Lord, there's a fish in the pond. Do you want me to catch him? So I started getting my bait on the hook. Say amen. He talked about his mom had just died. He talked about the fact that uh, he had quit going to church. So I said, okay, here's my chance. So I reached over and grabbed a handful of those Dr. Wilmington's books, and I said, here, take these home with you. These will be a blessing to you. He said, well, thank you. We kept talking a little while, and I gave him the gospel and a, and a neat package, and he said, you know what? I think I'm going to try to come visit you all sometime. I said, I promise you, I'll treat you so many ways you've got to like one. <laughs> you got to like one of them. Folks, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Influencing the world for Jesus. They're out there. They're hungry for something. They think it's the flesh. They think it's the world. They think it's sin. No, they're hungry for forgiveness and redemption. They don't want to hear your message because it's opposite to what the flesh wants. But if you get through that flesh with the truth, they'll get saved eventually. Say amen. They'll get saved. I remember visiting a lady for almost 12 years. Two or three times a year, I'd go by her house, and I'd go in her living room, and she'd be like a squirrel running after a nut. Sometimes I'd get her to sit down and talk to her. Sometimes I couldn't. But I faithfully kept going back to her house for 12 years. Finally, one day, she'd come in with a cup of coffee and sit down. I thought, this is weird. She said, down. We talked a while, talked a while, talked a while. Of course, we got around to the subject of salvation. I gave her the gospel again. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, please, may this be the time. I said, ma'am, wouldn't you like to ask Jesus to save you today? Well, she got that look on her face, same one she's had for 12 years. I thought, uh-oh. She's going to take your bait off the hook and going to go back to the pond again. She said, well, I think I will. I said, hallelujah, glory to God. And I led her to the Lord right there. She got saved. We got to be faithful in being watchmen. Israel is a nation. We are feeling these birth pangs. Do you agree with the first two? We ought to be looking for Jesus to come. We shouldn't put off till tomorrow what we ought to do today. Because tomorrow may never come. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Birthing pangs, we've seen those. We're feeling those. But the second sign is Israel becoming a nation. That happened in 1948. That's been a long time ago. Do your math. Jesus is about to come. First of all, if you're here this morning, you're lost and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You don't know if that trumpet sounds you go to heaven, that you might be left behind and spend eternity in a place called hell and have to live through the horrors of the Antichrist. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Preacher, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to be lost. I want to know when I die, I'm going to heaven. Preacher, what must I do to be saved? Ask him. That word call in Romans 10, 9 is not a phone call. It's not even a prayer. It's a cry for rescue. If you'll cry out to him right now and ask him to rescue you and save you, he'll do it. He'll forgive your past, settle your present, secure your future. 
Preacher, I want that. Well, Christians are praying for you right now to make that call. Why don't you call out to him and say this? Just pray from your heart to God's ears. Say, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus died, was buried, and rose again as payment for my sins. The best I know how I turn from sin to the Savior. I ask you to forgive my past, settle my present, secure my future. May your blood wash away my sins. May your burial give me forgiveness. May your resurrection give me eternal life. Save me right now. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Now, Lord, help me serve you the rest of my day. In Jesus' name, with every head bowed, every eye closed. If you prayed that prayer and called to him, he kept his word. He rescued you. He just wrote your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'll not come to you. I'll not embarrass you. I'll not call you by name. But I'd like to rejoice with you and give you the chance to give a testimony the first 60 seconds after you get saved and say, yes, I ask Christ to save me, and I'm not ashamed of Jesus. I'll pray for you and ask God to help you in your walk in life with Christ. Is there one who raised their hand this morning and say, Preacher, I prayed that prayer. Remember me in prayer. I'm starting my new life with Jesus. I got saved today, Preacher. Pray for me. Slip your hand slip it down very quickly. Anyone that way? Preacher, I prayed that prayer. Pray for me. I'm starting my new life in Christ. Let me here say, Preacher, I knew Jesus was coming. I even knew it was going to be soon. But Preacher, I'm beginning to understand it's going to be sooner than I thought. And I don't want to be caught unaware. I don't want to be caught unfaithful. I don't want to be caught worshiping something other than him. I know I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven. But I want to be found faithful, sharing the gospel, telling the story of Jesus, helping other people be saved and born again. Pastor, God spoke to me this morning. And I want to make sure I'm a faithful watchman. Preacher, I want you to pray with me when I leave this church today. I'll start telling the truth everywhere I go that I might be a faithful servant to God, a light in the midst of a dark world, a hope where there is none. Preacher, God spoke to me this morning. I need to be a better, more faithful servant. Slip your hand up so I can remember you in prayer this morning. God bless you all over the room. God bless you. Thank you. Have me say, Preacher, I've got somebody specific on my heart that's lost. I desperately want to see him get saved. Preacher, will you pray for me? I can lead him to God. Pray for me, preacher. Slip your hand up. Somebody's on your heart to be saved. You want to see him saved with all your heart, soul, and mind. Let's stand to your feet. Father, as we give this invitation, I pray right now that Christians will come and gather around this hall to pray for themselves and others that we may be found faithful watchmen in Jesus' name. As they begin to sing this verse of invitation, God spoke to you. Many are already coming. Won't you come too? Kneel, stand, sit, whatever you got to do. Come on. Let's do business with God. Jesus is calling. Will you call to him and pray to him? Are you really ready? You may be ready for the rapture, but are you ready to face whether or not you're faithful or not? Are you ready to face God at the judgment seat of Christ? As a faithful servant. For you and for me. Let's come home to God and draw nigh to God. The Bible says draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. That's a promise. That's a blessed promise.
wonderful day again, my Lord. Thank you for our many blessings. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity once again to be in your house. Lord, it was a blessing to be in your house this morning, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for speaking to us, God. Lord, we ask you just to please be with us all, Lord. We pray that you just put a burden on our heart, Lord, just to go out and win the lost, Lord, and encourage your brethren. Lord, I just pray you just help us to continue to strive to fulfill your will for our lives, Lord. Help us to do our best, Lord, because we know that you will do the rest. Lord, we just thank you once again for the 22 souls that were saved last week, Lord. We thank you We thank you so much for that. Lord, we just pray that you just work a mighty work tonight, God. We pray that you be with all the kids that came this week, Lord. We pray that you just uh, bless them and help them come back tonight, Lord. Help us all come back tonight, Lord, just to see what you are going to do, Lord. We just can't wait to see it. Lord, we just pray that many souls are saved and lives are changed, Lord, and just give you all the praise, Lord, and honor forever, Lord. We love you and thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name.